general remarks and results on uh, algebraic maps. And the second talk is just an application, a non-trivial, hopefully, application of uh, the content of the first talk to, an inter to a geometrically interesting, and not only geometrically, actually, interesting example, namely the so-called Hitchin vibration. So the second talk will be, in a sense, much more concrete, and uh, I'll describe a, a result which I find quite surprising, which is uh, which has been obtained very recently by uh, Mark De Cataldo, Thomas Hausel, and myself. It's not on the archive yet. It will be hopefully soon. Whereas the results which I'll talk about in the first talk are mostly due to others and uh, with some uh, details due to De Cataldo and myself. And uh, the result I'm going to describe in the second talk has also some connections with uh, the recent uh, epoch-making paper of uh, Bao Chongo on the fundamental lemma. So let me start with a, a very general question. So say first, first of all that x is a smooth complex, say, quasi-projective variety. Then the algebraic structure of x is, uh, at, at some extent, encoded in its Hodge theory. So this means that, uh, well, it means that if x is in fact projective, then we have the Hodge decomposition. Hq of x is the sum of the Hpq. Otherwise, the cohomology groups of x has a, have a more complicated version of the Hodge decomposition, so a more complicated structure, namely a mixed Hodge structure. which usually is, a, I mean, it's a, a linear algebra data, a linear algebra datum, which consists mo mostly of a one increasing filtration W on the rational uh, cohomology, and one decreasing filtration F on the complex cohomology with a very non-trivial compatibility condition, namely that uh, F induces on each graded uh, piece with respect to W a Hodge decomposition. So one, if somebody have, has never seen such a thing, one can think, even though it's not completely correct, actually it's far from being correct, but uh, one can think that uh, on each graded piece of, with respect to the W filtration, we have a Hodge decomposition. There's much more, there are extension data, but just uh, take this as a first appro approximation. And of course, well, well, of course, 
The Hodge decomposition for X projective and smooth is just a, a special case of the mixed Hodge decomposition, so the special case in which the W filtration is trivial in the sense that uh, WK minus one of this is zero and WK of this is everything. So there's only one piece in each cohomology group. So suppose now that uh, f from x to y is a projective map. y is no longer smooth. So the very general and vague question is how is F reflected in H dot of X. So when I, a dot means that I consider some cohomology group or maybe all together, but I don't want to specify it. So what does it mean? Well, F will induce some further structure on the cohomology of X. Some, there has to be some datum which reminds us that uh, a map is around. So, one first guess would be the fo following. with F is associated the Lerae spectral sequence that is H dot X um, there is a spectral sequence which eventually converge, converges to H dot X whose E2 term is easy to describe, although maybe not so easy to compute. So let's say I'm considering here rational coefficients. I will be considering either rational or complex coefficients. Integer coefficients are beyond my, my reach. So there is this Lorentz spectral sequence. So what does it mean? It means that the infinity term of this uh, spectral sequence will be the graded object associated to some uh, filtration of the cohomology of X. So in particular, there is a filtration which I'll call L. Uh, let's say I want it uh, increasing. The little filtration. On the cohomology of X which in, in some sense keeps trace of the presence of the map. So we have a further structure. And now, of course, the first question is, uh, well, this filtration exists even if F is any continuous map. The respect to sequence make, makes perfectly good sense in a very general context. So. Is there anything special about the Lorentz filtration when F is an algebraic map, in particular is a projective map? Um, yes, there is some, something special. Although it's not easy to prove. So, for instance, compatibility. of this filtration is 
with the Hodge structure. on h dot of x is true, although not trivial. So what does it mean, compatibility? Well, we have a filtration and uh, h dot of x already has other two filtrations. So compatibility means that uh, uh, the pieces of this filtration are uh, sub-Hodge structure of this guy, sub-mixed Hodge structures. Okay, this is true and quite recent. This is due to, well, certainly is due to Dono Arapura, mm, which year, maybe 2003, 2004, I don't know. 2,000 something, say less than six, I would say, <laughs> more than one, so, well, some finite number of possibility, less than 10 to the 20 of uh, Valerie's talk. Uh, well, let's say something symbolic. And um, I'm not sure, it, well, it could also come from uh, the general theory of Morihiko Saito. I'm not sure, though. So anyhow, so the fact that this filtration is not coming from any map, it's coming from an algebraic map, is a, or encoded in the fact that this filtration is by sub-Hodge structures, mixed or pure, depending on which cases we are. But um, aside from this, not much is known about this filtration. I mean, no other conditions are known about the Leray filtration. If I give you a, a, a filtration of the cohomology of X by sub-Hodge structures, it's not obvious what uh, one should try to understand in order to understand whether it comes from an algebraic map or just uh, is there for other reasons. Let's consider a very special case in which F is smooth. So suppose now F smooth. This is obviously a very strong property. So in this case, these uh, higher direct images, are Q or F lower star of Q, are not just shifts, they're a special kind of shifts, they're what is called a local system. Namely, they are locally constant, okay? The restriction to a neighborhood in the analytic topology is just uh, the constant shift. All, I mean, the difference between a local system and uh, just the constant shift is just that uh, there is some monodromy action. Locally, you cannot distinguish them. So they are asso associated to the monodromy representation so which goes from the fundamental group 
of the target with respect to some point, I'm supposing Y connected but to the general linear group uh, Q, sorry. of a fiber, okay? So by, by uh, this is a projective, so it's a proper map, so by Erasman lemma, this is topologically, it's a, a locally trivial vibration, so, I mean, there is a way to transport the cohomology class from one fiber to a nearby fiber and so on, and when you come back, you may have uh, the same cohomology group with a different identification. So these are local systems. And in the 70s, Deline proved the, a few big theorems about, uh, about this. So the first theorem is that in this case, the Leray spectral sequence degenerates at E2. So I'm not writing down the theorems in the form that Delin proved them. So the second theorem in, in this context is rather trivial, but I, I'm just writing it down to compare with the general case of a map, which I'm going to do. The second, th the second thing, which, which is actually obvious in this, in this context, is the following. Suppose that eta is relatively ample with respect to F, so it restricts to an ample line bundle fiber-wise. So fiber-wise, we have uh, the hard left shots theorem. So this means that uh, capping with the first chain class of eta to the K, say, gives an isomorphism between R D minus K F lower star Q to R D plus K F lower star Q where D is the relative dimension. So dimension of X minus dimension of Y. So this thing is a, an isomorphism. Okay. So these local systems are, are paired together by this fact, and three, and this is by far the deepest fact, the monodromy representations is semi-simple. What does it mean? Well, it means that it's uh, semi-simple. It's a direct sum of uh, irreducible representations. This is highly non-trivial, because in general, the fundamental group of a quasi-projective variety is something big and wild. Okay? You can think of, uh, I don't know, braid groups, something like mapping class groups or something, some big discrete group infinite, there's no reason why the monodromy representation is semi-simple. For instance, if you look locally, if you have a, a degeneration over the disk, the monodromy representations tend to be, I mean, looks at least at first sight, the opposite of something semi-simple because it's uh, more or less unipotent, quasi-unipotent. So the fact that the quasi-projective variety is such a global um, thing 
and makes the monodromy representation semi-simple is something quite surprising. So, none of these facts is true for a general map. Well, Let, do, you know, do you know an example where the rise pick classic map does not match in a way with integer coefficients? With integer coefficients. It's just a question. Uh, I, I should, I should, <laughs> I ran into an such an example, I think, once, but I, not right now I don't. I, I, I can think about it. So, for a general map, well, three doesn't make too much sense because uh, in order to consider a monodromy representation, you have to have some locally trivial vibration. So one can look at the smooth locus and then one is back to the smooth uh, case. But one and two, certainly fail. Well, let, let me say also some, something about one. This is the way that uh, the Linus theorem is quoted in several, at several places, for instance, in Griffith Harris' book. But in fact, the link proves some, something which is much stronger than this. And in a way, he proves that the Leroy spectral sequence degenerates for universal reasons. That in fact, any spectral sequence that you con can conceive out of this situation for F smooth has to degenerate. Because this degeneration comes from, a, some, from something which lies deeper than that, comes from an isomorphism in the derived category. So it, it means that, uh, I mean, that this degeneration is some sort of a universal phenomenon. So the fact that one and two fail for a general map can be related to what I was saying before, that the delay spectral sequence for a general map has no, I mean, that not much is known for the delay spectral sequence for a general map. So in the 80s, Balinson, Bernstein, De Ligne, Gabber, proved well, proved, well, yeah, proved there are many things, but uh, more than proving, they introduced the uh, new tools. So in, in some sense, the philosophy of what they did is that for a general map, the, the right analog of the Leroy spectral sequence is no longer the Leroy spectral sequence. So they proved that one, two, and three could be recovered just 
shifting the point of view. So could be recovered if one, in a way, stops to think about the Lyrae spectral sequence. So in which sense? In the sense that there exists a different spectral sequence. I'm not saying the things in the more general form in which they were proved. I'm just uh, trying to give um, some, uh, some idea. So there exists a different spectral sequence converging to h dot of x. I'm still assuming x is smooth. If x is not smooth, everything goes through, but then one has to, not only to stop thinking about the little spectral sequence, but, only to, but also to stop thinking about cohomology. One has to replace with a different topological invariant. So there is, exists a different spectral sequence converging to h dot x. Let me write it first and then I'll say what it is. Oh, well, I, I won't say what it is, but uh, I will suggest. So the PQ term is the hypercomology of y of certain objects. So this in a way replace the, the uh, RQ. So, so that one, two, three hold, in which sense? So in the following sense, So this HQP are no longer sheaves. They are complexes of sheaves. So more precisely, they are objects in the derived category of uh, complexes, of bounded complexes of sheaves with the constructible cohomology. But anyhow, there are complexes of sheaves of Q vector spaces. And the good thing is that the HPQ live in a very special niche inside the derived category. Namely, they live in an abelian subcategory which is called the category of perverse sheaves. And this abelian subcategory is quite special. This abelian subcategory is uh, of Artinian type. This means that the Jordan holder 
theorem holds and furthermore this category is invariant by duality so the category of complexes of shifts with this uh, technical important assumption of constructible cohomology has an involution which is called Verdier duality it's an involution which represents at the level of complexes of shifts I mean it incarnates Poincaré duality and, or basically every duality du that one can conceive coming from the algebraic topology formalism so this is a so this HQ are not just any complex of, of sheaves they are complexes which live in a very special place so they are so-called perverse sheaves and one two three hold so this new spectral sequence always degenerates to H2PQ this is what is called um, the decomposition the theorem and as, just as before this is actually just the reflection of something deeper that uh, that is the, of an isomorphism at the level of derived categories and there is a an analog of this so this was you remember just hard left sheds fiber wise okay the analog of this is much deeper I won't write it down because now I would involve with indices and then I should explain the convention for numbering of complexes and then that would uh, lead us too far away I mean some unpleasant uh, discussion but I mean something like this holds you 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 pair with the capping of the with the relative ample line bundle and this uh, and this thing are just uh, identified specularly okay so in the in the right number con convention this go go from some minus r to plus r okay so these are symmetric with respect to zero there is a minus r at some point and r at the other extreme and li just like uh, in the hard left sheets eta identif i mean gives an isomorphism between h minus 1 and h1 and eta square between h minus 2 and h2 and so on and 3 also holds in the sense that uh, so since the Jordan Holder theorem holds for these uh, perverse shifts a priori these things are extension of uh, simple objects in this abelian category but it turns out actually that these objects are semi-simple they split into direct sum of simple objects and also there is a fourth miracle is that the simple objects of the category of perverse sheaves are obtained by a universal recipe <laughs> 
And this universal recipe is the following. It's called the intermediate extension. So you start from a sub-variety of Z. Maybe take its, some subset of its smooth locus and take some local system on this. And then there is a universal recipe to construct a perverse sheaf out, out of it. This universal recipe is usually denoted by J lower shriek lower star. It's called the middle extension. And it, it's actually not too hard to prove that simple objects in these categories are all obtained by this. And of course, there is also something which I should have said just uh, at the beginning that, uh, let me state this as a remark. So up to a renumbering, these strange objects, HPQ, are just the direct image if f is smooth. Up to a renumbering, which I won't specify. Hmm? Are something. So, so if, so the right uh, thing should be, uh, yeah, there's a shift. <laughs> <laughs> there is a shift. So if it's relative dimension d, then these things go from minus d to d, and this goes from 0 to 2d. So, and also there is a shift because these are placed in, this is some, something which uh, is, uh, is better to avoid at this point. Okay. So in a sense, this looks the right generalization of the Lyrae spectral sequence as far as, I mean, the richness of structure is concerned. Okay. The Lyrae spectral sequence is something which behaves well. It has a rich structure when the map is smooth. The right substitute, if f is just a general, proper or projective map is just this uh, more sophisticated thing. Uh, le let me just say a, a few words of how this, this is done. So the Leroy spectral sequence arises like that. You take the constant sheaf, you take an injective resolution, you push it forward by the map F, and then you have what is called the stan standard truncation of a complex. Okay, so you have a sequence of truncations, and this is, is how the, spec the Leray spectral sequence arises. This spectral sequence is constructed by considering a, a different, much more sophisticated, notion of truncation. It's not only the standard truncation. It's a truncation which in some sense is, uh, well, is more adapted to the map. And the m basic fact is that this truncation behaves well with respect to Verdier duality. I mean, the fact that there is an involution on the derived category of uh, sheaves is an important fact. One shouldn't just uh, ignore it. So if one doesn't ignore it and looks for the sensible way to truncate a complex, sensible in, in the sense that it uh, behaves well to, with respect to this duality, then this is the spectral sequence which arises. So, so back to our original question.
so on. This spectral sequence star, this guy here, defines a filtration. I'll call it p dot on h dot x, which has a richer structure than l dot. essentially because of this uh, analog of the hard left shits. So my private uh, mathematical obsession is how to understand p dot. So So this is something to which um, the Cataldo and myself have devoted uh, a lot of uh, work and thought. So let me remark that this p dot may be very tricky. I mean, it is defined in a non-trivial way, so it's, it can very well be non-trivial. So for instance, unlike the Leray filtration, it can be trivial even though the map f is not finite. I mean, the Leray filtration, we have a, an understanding. What are the, the pieces? I mean, are q f lower, I'm supposing the map proper, so are q f lower star q at the point y is just hq of f minus 1 why? Okay. But here, it's nothing like that. So, for instance, just let me give you an example. If f from x to y is generically finite and dimension of x equal dimension of y equals 2, so a, say a resolution of surfaces, of a surface singularity. That's easy. p minus 1 is 0, p0 is everything. I mean, the filtration is just one step. This can be generalized for in, to every so-called semi-small map. So if f is semi-small, what does it mean? Well, that means that, uh, so for all k, 2k plus the dimension of the set of y in y where the dimension of the fiber. No, let me write down in a, read in a readable way. So 
So for all k, the dimension of the set of y inside big Y, such that the dimension of the fiber is k plus 2k is less than or equal to dimension of x, OK? Then p dot is trivial. It has only one step. So for instance, it is a theorem that, oh, hopefully, that this is true for every um, generically finite map, uh, proper map between uh, holomorphic symplectic varieties. Okay? If you start from a smooth holomorphic symplectic variety and you contract something, the map is automatically semi-small. So in this case, this p dot doesn't tell you anything even though the map is far from being generic, I mean, from being finite. There are big fibers, but not so big as to disturb this uh, filtration. So uh, what do I have to say about this question? What I have to say is what uh, Mark and myself have been able to prove, and this uh, reduces basically to two theorems. So theorem one, this can be, so this is due to De Cataldo and myself, and you can, bear, and you can find it uh, buried uh, into 60 pages of a paper on uh, the annal of a normal superior um, 2005, I think. So the, the theorem characterizes this p dot in case in which x and y are projective. So pick an ample line bundle O y of one on y, any then I I won't write down the indices in the right way because of the reasons that I <laughs> told you. Then P dot is constructed by a universal formula involving the kernel of capping with the pullback of this line bundle. maybe iterated, and the images of this iterated to some power. So you see what I mean? I mean that capping with the, the pullback defines an endomorphism of the cohomology of x. Clearly nilpotent, because after a while you have no degree. So if this bundle was ample, which is not because it's a pullback, if this bundle was ample, then we know everything about its Jordan form. It's the hard left shit tells you about its Jordan form. Okay. In general, you have uh, you have the kernels of its iterates and the images of these iterates. So basically, again, up to a non-trivial renumbering, p dot is more or less a convolution of the filtration by the kernels and the filtration by the images. Okay. So you take uh, kernels, you intersect with images with a different 
number and then you add up. So in particular, this means that P dot is a filtration by sub Hodge structures. And this actually comes also from, uh, from the theory of Moriko Saito, from the so-called theory of mixed Hodge modules. So there is a universal formula. Ba basically, you read this filtration, you read this uh, exoteric filtration by, from the Jordan form of this endomorphism. And, uh, is it difficult to see that this does not depend on the line bound of the... No, it's not obvious. It it's comes, obvious no. Yeah, but it's true, but uh, because it's a different description, but a priori could depend, yes. And now, for something completely different, now for something new. I mean, not new, it has two years, but... Uh, Theorem 2, and this concerns the case in which f is a fine. I mean, still due to the Cataldo myself. There is a version for a quasi projective, but it's so heavy that uh, I don't want to. It. So um, let lambda s inside y be a general general means really general s dimension <coughs> complete intersection in y. So for instance, just uh, embed y into some affine space and cut with uh, the right number of hyperplanes. But these hyperplanes have to be general. Then, this filtration on hk of x is the simplest thing one could imagine, namely, the eighth step of this filtration is just the kernel of the restriction map to the inverse image of lambda with the right number, which is uh, yeah, k minus a minus 1. This is on the archive, uh, and it's going to appear somewhere, some, some when, somewhere. And so this is, I think, uh, at the end, rather surprising. I mean, restriction to the inverse image of, a, of the intersection with some linear subspace, for instance, is the most obvious thing that you can imagine. So at the end, it, 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 it is, I think, quite striking that there is a, a process at the level of shifts. So this truncation that I didn't describe, this perverse truncation, there is a, pro, pro, uh, a process at the level of shifts which, when read globally, just encodes the restriction to, the in, to inverse images of uh, general subvarieties enough and general enough subvarieties. One can also say in which sense this general should be taken. So you, I mean this characterization is quite, uh, well again from this it, it follows immediately that, uh, that this filtration is compatible with the Hodge theory because the restriction map is certainly a map of uh, Hodge structures. 
In fact, I, well, not me, but <laughs> Bellinson said that this is a, a motivic characterization of uh, the perverse filtration. I don't know what motivic means, but uh, I mean, there's no reason to, <laughs> to believe that Bellinson is not right. So, um, using, this, using this characterization, we proved the, a theorem that the theorem that I'm going to describe in the next talk. But I mean, this characterization is uh, easy enough to, to work out some uh, examples. For instance, just take uh, an affine uh, variety, blow up some points, blow up some sub varieties, and you immediately see from this uh, characterization what this filtration is. And of course, another, I think, quite surprising thing is that this filtration, it's not obvious that, I mean, we have the, the analog of the relative hard left sheets, the relative hard left sheets, which tells you that uh, on the graded parts of this filtration, there is an isomorphism. And clearly, you would never prove this isomorphism from this description. So it's something that uh, is probably quite uh, surprising. So I think I, I'll stop here for the first general talk. Then.